Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. So I had big plans last weekend to do a lot of reading because it was a holiday, and I didn't. I did way more uh, TV watching. So halfway through the week, I had to go, okay, no more TV watching. I need to read. And this week I finished The Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. I just needed a palate cleanser, as you can say. I really enjoyed this. Scalzi has a writing style that for me is very reminiscent of Robert Heinlein. And Robert Heinlein was one of my early science fiction influences that helped get me into the genre. And so I tend to like his books pretty well. And this is no no different. It's about a man named Jamie Gray who, upon the onset of the pandemic, gets fired from his job. And so he is delivering food and runs into an old acquaintance who then offers him a job for to work for the Kaiju Preservation Society. And it just works out perfectly for him. I mean, he's really needing more money, so then his roommates don't have to leave and he's not stuck with the rent all by himself. But the only thing he knows about the job is it's working with big, large animals and he will be actively working with them. So there, it's probably going to be danger involved. It is just a romp from there. Uh, there so if we're going to start with a con with this one, it would be that the entire book, everyone is snarky and that can get old and you can, some, sometimes people will start to sound like each other since every single person is snarky. But again, I needed the palate cleanser, so it worked for me. Another con for people could be that it is mostly dialogue. It does not go into a lot of description. The description you have is only because it's necessary for what the character's looking at or dealing with and all the action happens through interactions with other people. Again, I like that style, so it worked well for me. I'm trying to stay away from spoilers because this just came out this year. I like how Scalzi dropped in all of the sci-fi references, the older ones, newer ones. It was really a lot of fun, especially because you weren't sure where that would come up. All of a sudden, there's your sci-fi reference. And I like that some of them he even called out. Like one, one person at the very beginning uses a term and he goes, oh, hey, that's from this book. Oh, well, if it's not Disney, then we're not getting sued. And I was just like, hey, that's really how people think about it. And oh my gosh. And so, it, like I said, it's just a lot of fun. Um, the author himself describes this as kind of a pop song. This is something that you're just, it's supposed to, you're supposed to enjoy. It's candy or popcorn. It's to help you have a break from the world. Something else I liked about this, that even though Jamie and then there's three other new people on the team, even though they're new, they're not treated as low-level employees. They're, they're like, no, you guys are this level. This is what we brought you in. Here's your... They do have to do training because they're new to the environment. They are considered fully responsible adults and are asked their opinions about things and are involved and decision processes. And that's really, that was a different way of looking at working within a group structure since many times in science fiction, oh, you're new to the group. Well, now we have to do all this training and you're a low level and you have to work your way up. Mm -mm, no, nope, these people came in at their level and they're just like, oh, you're new. Well, let's catch you up on things. And then, oh, guess what? Now you get to go do the work. And I really enjoyed that. And I like that everyone expected people to be professional. So that was very refreshing for me. And I think it is a great pro to this book is you're not going to be getting people going, oh, you know nothing, so shut up. They're gonna be like, oh no, you have this degree. You have this knowledge base. What do you think? And as, as you can see, I keep giving it to my husband. So he's actually in the middle of reading it. I had to borrow it back to do this video and then it's going to go back to him so he can finish it. It's a short book, um, longer than a novella, so it is a novel. But again, it I finished, let me, 
I'm a slow reader. I started this book like 6 p.m. on in one evening and read until I went to bed and then I had maybe a quarter of the book left to finish the next day. So if I had started it like at 8 a.m. that morning, I would have finished it in one day. Very, very, it's very easy to read. Again, it's a great palate cleanser, especially if you've been reading a lot of more serious or hard hitting things. You need the pop song in your life. Yes, I did make progress in this and I am still enjoying it. I'm at the part where like, Luca and Terrain are having to just make moves. They actually have to act upon things that they've been thinking about and I know things are going to start getting messy from here. But yes, I am still reading this and still enjoying it. We will see how this goes. <laughs> and then I got an arc for a book called Perils of Sea and Sky by Lillian Horn. Sorry. And I'm, it's a digital arc, so I had to go look up the cover. And I'm trying to read like a chapter a night just to kind of keep a flow. And I'm enjoying it so far. I'm in chapter four. I just finished chapter four, so this is where the characters have started their journey. And the world is a steampunk sort of feel. It feels like a steampunk flintlock fantasy at this moment. So I found the description of their airships interesting, and they're off on their quest to get answers. It is a dual perspective, so we follow Nelson Blackwood for one chapter, and then you'll follow Roseanne Drakenhart. Well, I guess they don't, it's not chapter by chapter. Within the same chapter, you'll get their different points of views. And then Nelson Blackwood is the lawyer who has initiated this quest and kind of pressured, blackmailed the Captain Roseanne Drakenhart into doing this for him. And I haven't really discovered what Roseanne's motivation is, of why everything is happening. I figure that will kind of tumble out. She's more of a reserved character and you kind of find things out as she interacts with people. Whereas Nelson is more in his head and so as he's thinking about things, that's how you find out the information. Enjoying it so far? And I really enjoy this cover. I think it's very pretty. I believe it's supposed to come out either in August or September. So I will definitely have a review for it when I am done. This also completes my dessert a thon prompt milk, the white cover. So yay, I got a dessert a thon prompt done as well. Because I started this in June. But I don't know yet what I'm going to pick up for my next dessert a thon prompt. And then because this week turned into... A new month, we have my May monthly wrap up. So in the month of May, I only finished six items. Five were novels and one was a novella. So I had a little bit of a slower reading month, but you know, after April with 19, I think it balances. For the month of May, I did not read any new release. Or the Kaiju Preservation Society is going to be in the June stats because I read it in June. And my, for my currently reading list on in May, I started and finished with the same number because I did not read anything from that list and I did not add anything new to the list. I also did not read anything from my physical TBR. While I did work on some series, ongoing series, I did not start anything new and I did not finish anything new. So I read more standalones this month, which was nice. It's when you have a lot of series and there's still a lot of series you want to read, it's nice to then not have to worry about continuing. It, it's, it's nice to then pick up things where you're jumping into the world and then you're going to leave. And you can revisit by rereading the book, but you don't have to worry about, oh, now I have to go get the next one. I love my series, but I like my standalones as well. For my writing wrap-up, I have been going over my projects and just looking at them, and I'm looking at them right now because they're behind the camera, I'm looking at the ones that are furthest along and trying to decide what I'm wanting to focus on. 
I've been project hopping, which is fun and it helps with, I'm not in such a writing mood because then my attention wanders. So the project hopping is cool, but I do have some projects that are farther along and I would like to spend more time in them. The weekend of the 18th of June is another worldwide write-a-thon and so I was kind of looking to see what projects I possibly want to tap into for that time. And also in July we have a Camp Nano. So again, I want to write something or work on something. Also in July there is going to be an Author 2 writing conference. It's going to be online and it's going to be free. So I, who have never been to a writing conference, am very excited to participate with this one and to see what they're going to do. This is their first year of doing it. So all these things I'm mentioning, I am going to link it down below. So if you are a writer or interested in writing, you can pop on and see. And then for other media, I <laughs> binged the challenge. That's just, that's what I'm doing is I'm just binging the challenge. I'm on season 33, I think it's 33. Yeah, so I'm just binge watching it. And I'm enjoying it. They're, so they now have, the season I'm on now has brought in more world celebrities. So there's people I've never heard of before. And it's kind of interesting. A lot of the vets have been kicked off or have been eliminated off. Let me say that. So a lot of the vets have been eliminated off pretty quickly. And it's very interesting for me to see. It's shaking things up and people who have been on the challenge a lot but normally don't get a chance to go to a final are looking like they might have a chance to actually get to a final. Again, I just like it because the challenges that they do are fun to watch. And then that's been my week 22, I believe it is. I've had fun. I've had a lot of fun. It's been a nice week, nice relaxful week. I did have to tell myself to stop watching the challenge so then I could read and get more reading done because again, my reading plans for the holiday weekend ended up being binge watching, which sometimes you just need that. I will see all of you guys later and I hope that you've been having a fantastic May and into June. I'm enjoying that the weather is warmer and I'm going to be out in it today. So, and I got a new Stumbling Bear shirt from my husband's campaign. I'm very excited. All right. Well, you all have a wonderful day. Bye.